This is massive news shaking up the WNBA right now. Caitlin Clark, one of the league's brightest and most influential stars, has made an unexpected and stunning decision to take her talents overseas, officially stepping away from the WNBA. This move has left the basketball world in shock. It is bad news for the WNBA that she's not continuing to play. W thinks that they don't have to pay us more. Commissioner talked about us being able to make 700000 That's actually, that's not true at all. Diana Taurasi played in Russia and did not play in the WNBA. In all of the sellouts, Caitlin asked the WNBA if they would pay spot bonuses to the away team players. This is a move absolutely no one saw coming. But when you take a closer look at the reasons behind Caitlin Clark's decision, it actually starts to make a lot of sense. There are deeper factors at play here that explain why this shocking choice isn't as surprising as it seems. Our biggest star in the league, Caitlin Clark, is only making a base salary of around $76,000. In today's video, we're taking a deep dive into why Caitlin Clark has made the bold choice to leave the WNBA and join the European League. From shockingly low salaries that don't even compare to what NBA players earn, to the financial realities that pushed her toward this decision, we'll break it all down. NBA players make millions and millions of dollars. Victor Wembanyama rookie salary, which was around $55 million for four years. And then you look at Caitlin Clark's $338,000 salary that she signed for four years. It's around 162 times more that Victor made than Caitlin. We'll also dive into the ongoing issues Caitlin Clark has faced within the league, from unfair treatment and racial bias to questionable refereeing decisions. We're covering it all, giving you the full picture of what led to her departure. Caitlin Clark was the solution for so many things, but so many players, coaches also painting her out to be the problem. There was all of this just nonsense about things that Caitlin was doing wrong when, in my personal opinion, she was doing nothing but going out there and playing great basketball every night and ignoring the hate that was coming to her from all sides. She was getting all of that, yet all of these eyeballs were coming to the league because of her. We're going to discuss how Caitlin Clark's presence has single-handedly been the driving force behind the WNBA's current buzz. Yet despite her massive impact, she still isn't receiving the support she truly deserves. Caitlin Clark came in and made such an impact on how many people started to care about the WNBA. This was the highest viewed season in the history of the league. We'll break down the numbers and compare salaries, showing you just how outrageous this situation really is. Buckle up, because things are about to get real. Let's start with the biggest reason Caitlin Clark is leaving the WNBA, the massive pay gap. Storm player Gabby Williams warned the WNBA, if you want to keep international players, you need to do better. W thinks that they don't have to pay us more in order for us to be here. And I think I didn't um, express that when I first talked about prioritization. You know, our commissioner talked about us being able to make 700,000. That's actually, that's not true at all. There's not one player who makes that. We were promised, you know, team marketing agreements and legal marketing agreements, but they've fallen quite short. So it's still not enough for us international players to want to stay here. And and that's a choice of the players. If I make a choice to make more money, whatever, and then the you know teams are mad that I don't come back, but <laughs> that's how it is. So yes, it, it just the WNBA. You know, if you want us to be here, you have to pay us more. It's business. It's how it works, and that's that's all that. From the sounds of this interview, it seems like she's probably going to make more money overseas in Euroleague than she did during this WNBA season. It's no secret that WNBA players are drastically underpaid compared to their NBA counterparts. While NBA stars rake in millions every season, the average salary for a WNBA player is shockingly low. Even with Caitlin's incredible talent and the attention she's brought to the league, her paycheck just doesn't reflect her value. Diana Taurasi played in Russia and did not play in the WNBA. Russia paid Diana Taurasi $1.5 million salary to play in Russia. The WNBA, the highest salary in the league was $107,000. So obviously that's a huge jump. What's even more frustrating is that Caitlin's presence has been a complete game changer for the WNBA. We're talking sold out arenas, thousands of new fans, and a huge spike in viewership, all thanks to her. She's brought unmatched energy and excitement to the league, yet it still doesn't feel like she's being valued properly. 
highest paid pay player in the WNBA, currently makes a little over $200,000 in salary. I don't know what the WNBA does with their marketing dollars. Just take a look at what Allison Barber, president of the Indiana Fever, said when Caitlin played away games, the arenas were packed. They weren't just selling out tickets. They even had standing room only spots available. Her impact on the league's fan base is undeniable and it's clear that she's single-handedly driving excitement for the WNBA. Yet, despite all this, the support and compensation haven't matched her contributions. Here's all you need to know about Caitlin Clark. When we would go to away games, they always sold out. It's unbelievable. So Atlanta would normally have 3,000, 4,000 people. Now they have 17,000 people. And they sold 1,000 standing room only tickets. So when we walked into the arena, people were on that third balcony looking down at the tops of our players' heads to watch. It's really hard to take in. After a few away games and all of the sellouts, Caitlin asked the WNBA if they would pay spot bonuses to the away team players. She said, wow. we're, ma we're making all this new revenue and I would like the away team to benefit from that. Could they get a spot bonus? So that's the heart of Caitlin Clark. The Fever's away games felt like home games, thanks to the sheer number of Caitlin Clark fans filling the stands. It's incredible to see how much support she's generated, turning these games into a celebration of her talent. Yet, despite all this, Caitlin and other WNBA stars aren't reaping the financial rewards of their hard work and dedication. It raises some serious questions about the league's priorities and how they value their marquee players. Caitlin's rookie salary is, is a little over 300,000 for four years, and that's all that she's going to make in the WNBA. Now, I feel like there could be a team overseas who would love to snatch Caitlin Clark away from us and give her a crazy offer. I mean, Ice Cube was about to give her 5 million to play in less than 10 games in the big three. NBA players are raking in huge deals, while WNBA players, even those like Caitlin who are generating significant revenue, are stuck with relatively low salaries. Caitlin isn't the type to sit back and let this injustice happen. She took the initiative to advocate for spot bonuses for players on opposing teams when she noticed the revenue her games were bringing in. Unfortunately, under the current collective bargaining agreement in the WNBA, those bonuses simply weren't approved. This highlights a glaring disparity in how talent is rewarded in the two leagues. The money is there, and if these owners are smart with it, I could definitely see more WNBA players going overseas and possibly not returning. Considering all of this, it's no wonder Caitlin is exploring options in a league where her talent can receive the compensation it truly deserves. The European League presents players with better salaries, greater respect, and overall superior treatment, elements that Caitlin has more than earned. This decision isn't solely about the money, it's about receiving recognition for the immense impact she's made on the game. Unfortunately, the WNBA isn't providing that kind of support or acknowledgement at this moment. Caitlin was still advocating for players on the other team to get bonuses because she saw the kind of money and, and eyeballs and viewership that all of this was generating. Another crucial factor driving Caitlin Clark's decision to leave the WNBA is the racial dynamics present within the league. Throughout the season, Caitlin endured significant scrutiny, facing harsh criticism not only from fans, but also from players and coaches who appeared to unfairly target her. This kind of treatment can take a toll, and it's clear that the environment has contributed to her decision to seek a more supportive atmosphere elsewhere. This season has been nothing short of a mess. It has been so unprofessional, and they need to step it up, and they need to step it up quick. Despite her phenomenal skills and achievements, many narratives painted her as the problem rather than recognizing her as a solution to the league's challenge challenges. The NBA in 2022 made around $10 billion in revenue. That is about 166 times the amount of money that the WNBA makes. This leads us to a crucial issue, the perception of bias against Caitlin. Throughout the season, there have been multiple instances where referees seem to favor black players, often overlooking fouls committed against them while calling Caitlin and her teammates for minor infractions. This kind of unequal treatment can be disheartening for any athlete, but it's particularly discouraging for someone like Caitlin, who has been under such intense scrutiny. 
The pressure of constantly battling against these perceptions can significantly impact a player's experience, making her decision to leave the WNBA even more understandable. Caitlin Clark is just such a class act. She was incredible, breaking all types of records, and that's something she was certainly proud of. We saw lots of smiles on the court. Caitlin is the face right now, and that's also good. Like, she's selling out gyms, mm -hmm. of course. Like, why would you hate against that? We saw dirty play after dirty play on Caitlin Clark, and still, she just handled every single situation with the highest levels of dignity. As she showcased her talent night after night, it became increasingly evident that the system seemed rigged against her. Despite her incredible skills and hard work, Caitlin often felt as though she was battling not just opponents, but the very structure of the league itself. This ongoing struggle contributed to a growing sense of isolation and frustration for her, as she navigated a landscape that didn't always seem to recognize or reward her contributions appropriately. WNBA players and their pretend friends in the mainstream media, they have done everything they can to diminish the impact of Caitlin Clark. They tried to convince us that there are other players in the dump capable of drawing an audience. They tried to convince us that other players deserve the spotlight. Players like Gabby Williams have openly discussed the messiness and unprofessionalism within the WNBA, highlighting the drama and chaos that overshadowed the season. If Caitlin felt she was being unfairly targeted and that refereeing biases were impacting her gameplay, it only fuels her desire to seek opportunities elsewhere. She wants a league where she can truly showcase her skills without the distractions and frustrations that have clouded her experience in the WNBA. The hope is to find a competitive environment that respects her talent and allows her to thrive. Owner of the Atlanta Dreamer said, this is our league. All those people who have been saying, this is our league, they can't sell out playoff games. I, I don't think the WNBA is ready for this type of attention that, that she's bringing. Racism. Everybody's talking about enough with the racist BS. She's nasty. She knows how to ball. Everybody else is jealous. They're pissed off because she's getting this like, it, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. And we're never going to advance as a species. And we're never, if he keeps having that type of attitude, it, it, it's ridiculous. It's like, what? Everything has to go back to race. Everything has to keep going back to race. She's really good. Let it be that. And the other players should shut the hell up. Like, she, nobody was talking about your league. Nobody cared about the WNBA until that girl. That girl, Caitlin Clark, I don't care what color she is. She's ridiculous. She's nasty. And now people are watching and you guys are talking shit about her. She should leave. She should have got those other contracts. Pat. Where, where, where does she have a contract to go somewhere the else? Big three. She should have gone to the big three. To hell with the WNBA. They're nothing. They're nobody. Caitlin's decision to join the European League provides her with a chance to escape the pressure cooker of the WNBA environment. In Europe, she can find a more level playing field where she can focus on her game without the constant burden of proving herself against perceived biases. This fresh start could allow her to thrive, showcase her immense talent, and enjoy the sport without the distractions that have plagued her in the WNBA. Ultimately, this move represents an opportunity for Caitlin to redefine her career on her terms. There's a league with players that feel like they should be getting the attention. Now they have center stage, but the ratings are going to go down. Are they going to be pointing fingers and blaming Indiana Fever fans and Caitlin Clark fans whenever the ratings don't stay the same? Yeah, they will. The prospect of playing in a league that truly appreciates her talents, free from the added complications of racial dynamics, could be incredibly appealing for Caitlin Clark. She deserves an environment that fosters her growth as a player and allows her to excel without the distractions and challenges she faced in the WNBA. Unfortunately, the current state of the league isn't providing that support. In Europe, Caitlin has the opportunity to thrive in a space that values her contributions and prioritizes her development, making this move not just a career choice, but a vital step toward her future success. Hey, look at the numbers everywhere else across women's basketball. It's not just Caitlin Clark. It's all of us. And then the moment the ratings tank, they're going to come back and say, see, well, we were right all along. Uh, it's all the racists that follow Caitlin Clark yeah. that were watching the product, and now they're gone, and we're back with our diehards. It is bad news for the WNBA that she's not continuing to play. One of the most glaring reasons behind Caitlin Clark's decision to leave the WNBA for the European League is the significant disparity in salaries. Despite her immense talent and the massive viewership she brings to the league, Caitlin has confronted the stark reality 
that WNBA salaries are far lower than what she could earn overseas. While she lights up arenas and draws in new fans, the financial compensation simply doesn't reflect her value. In Europe, she has the potential to earn a salary that truly aligns with her skills and the impact she makes on the game. This financial consideration is a crucial factor in her decision to make this move. Most points by a point guard in a season in WNBA history. Most double doubles by a rookie guard in WNBA history. Most points by a rookie in WNBA history. Most assists by a rookie in the history of the WNBA. First WNBA rookie to record two triple doubles. First triple double by a rookie in WNBA history. First triple double in fever history. The first player to be named WNBA player of the month and rookie of the month in the same month. First player in WNBA history with 20 or more points, 15 or more assists, and five or more rebounds in a game. She won rookie of the month four times. Eastern Conference player of the week three times single season rookie record for assists single season rookie record for three pointers single game record for assists 19 franchise record for most double doubles uh, three pointers career 10 or more assists in a game franchise record for most career 10 or more assists in a game fastest WNBA player to reach 100 three pointers she did it in 34 games most assists by a rookie in a WNBA all-star game for which she received the most fan votes ever 700,000 of those fastest player to reach 350 points and 150 assists to start a season regardless of years in the league people will say pay more attention to the other folks like she couldn't do it herself you know lebron has teammates jordan had teammates i understand let's break down the numbers in the wnba the average salary for a player hovers around one hundred and twenty thousand dollars per season with top players earning between two hundred thousand dollars to three hundred thousand dollars in contrast european leagues offer players substantially higher salaries for instance Top European players can earn upwards of $1 million per season, with some reports indicating that certain stars can command even more based on their marketability and performance. This glaring financial incentive makes it increasingly difficult for Caitlin and many others to justify staying in a league that doesn't adequately compensate their contributions. With such a stark difference in earnings potential, it's clear why Caitlin is exploring her options abroad. Caitlin Clark has been the best thing, the most dominant thing to happen to the WNBA ever. Remember, there's been good players come out of college, but nobody really cared. We'd seen it. Nobody really, really cared. Additionally, when we look at the viewership numbers Caitlin brings to the WNBA, the statistics are eye-opening. The league has experienced unprecedented growth in viewership, largely driven by Caitlin's standout performances. Her games have drawn in massive audiences, captivating fans and generating excitement like never before. This surge in viewership highlights just how significant her impact has been on the league. Yet despite this, the financial rewards don't reflect the attention and growth she's inspired. It's a clear indicator that the WNBA has a lot of room for improvement in recognizing and rewarding the players who are driving its success. Caitlin Clark is box office. Caitlin is the face right now, and that's also good. Like, she's selling out gyms. Caitlin Clark is a megastar. TV ratings have spiked 153% from last season, and that's before the playoffs, which began last week. Caitlin Clark is a box office draw, while the rest of the WNBA, it is nothing but a polished turd. But the attention she brought to the sport, hopefully going to have a residual effect for years to come. They have done everything they can to diminish the impact of Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is just such a class act. She was incredible, breaking all types of records, and that's something she was certainly proud of. We saw lots of smiles on the court. Caitlin has single-handedly transformed away games into home game atmospheres for her team, the Indiana Fever, showcasing her remarkable ability to attract fans and significantly boost ticket sales. It's incredible to see how her presence can energize a crowd and create an electric atmosphere even in unfamiliar venues. Yet, despite being a primary reason for this buzz, she is not receiving a salary that reflects her market value or the substantial revenue she generates for the league. This discrepancy underscores a larger issue within the WNBA, where the financial rewards do not align with the immense contributions players like Caitlin are making to the sport. 
I was wrong about the impact that Caitlin Clark was going to have on the WNBA. I did not think it was possible that one player could come in and basically quadruple the ratings. Caitlin Clark, in terms of pro team sports impact, is the single most influential athlete that I have ever seen in my life. Caitlin Clark, 25.6 rebounds, 9 assists. The last rookie in NBA, WNBA playoff history to reach these numbers was Magic John. Magic Johnson was great. He could do everything. Caitlin Clark just had a playoff series like Magic Johnson did way back in his rookie year. Her game resonates with people in basketball and across the country because she's got that edge. She plays with a flair, but she's got that edge. The hands go up. The contrast between the treatment of Caitlin Clark and that of other players further exacerbates the situation. It's not just about the money. It's about recognition and respect. Caitlin has consistently demonstrated her talent and impact on the court, yet she often feels overlooked compared to her peers. This disparity highlights a troubling pattern in the league, where not all players are treated equally despite their contributions. The lack of acknowledgement for Caitlin's hard work and the significant role she plays in elevating the WNBA's profile leaves her feeling undervalued and unappreciated. Every athlete deserves recognition for their efforts, and it's essential for the league to address these inequalities to foster a more supportive and equitable environment for all players. It was such a bittersweet end to a phenomenal rookie season that Caitlin Clark had. And it honestly got me to just reflecting on this season. And it sucks that so much of it was riddled with so much drama and so much negativity and so many mishaps that the WNBA had throughout the entire season. Many players in the WNBA especially those with extensive social media followings or significant marketing power, seem to receive preferential treatment when it comes to salary negotiations and endorsements. Despite her proven track record on the court, Caitlin Clark's financial compensation doesn't reflect her contributions to the league. This disparity raises questions about the criteria used for valuing players and the importance of not only talent, but also marketability in determining salaries. Caitlin's impact extends beyond just her performances. She draws fans, boosts viewership, and generates excitement for the WNBA. Yet, the financial rewards she receives fall short of what her contributions warrant. This inequity underscores the need for a more balanced approach to recognizing and compensating players hey there, based on their true fans. value Meet to the Meet Caitlin Clark. The w Caitlin Clark was the gift that kept on giving. Absolutely 1,000% kept on giving. And while she was doing this, I told you that even boys, men, are going to figure out, hey, wait a second, I'm kind of digging this. Not for her looks, not Angel Reese taking off her top or showing her ass or whatever she's doing. No, Caitlin Clark's game resonated. Caitlin Clark's rivalry with Reese resonated. It resonated with me, which means it resonates with men. Real men. Ultimately, Caitlin Clark's decision to join the European League offers her the chance to secure a salary that truly reflects her talent and marketability. This move allows her to break free from the frustrations of a league that may not fully appreciate her impact and provides her with the financial stability she deserves as one of the brightest stars in women's basketball. As we wrap up this discussion, it's evident that Caitlin's choice to leave the WNBA for the European League is rooted in a complex web of factors. From significant salary disparities to the challenges of competing in an environment that hasn't fully embraced her, Caitlin's journey highlights the need for recognition and respect for game changers like her. Her departure is a powerful statement about the current state of the league and the importance of valuing players who drive change and excitement in women's basketball. There are still people who seemingly feel like they just don't want Caitlyn to be a part of it. Because with Caitlyn comes millions and millions and millions of more eyeballs. And with those millions and millions and millions of more eyeballs, unfortunately, is going to come some people who are not nice. What the WNBA is, is measuring one type of greatness against the other greatness. Am I saying it's right that she's being pushed in the back? No, that's foul. Mm -hmm. That's That has no space in the sport, and we all know that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Andrea, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not going 
gonna let you make it seem like Caitlin Clark was averaging five points a game. At the time, she that. was still averaging 16 points a game, which was more than a lot of other guards that made the team. So but don't there, do that. Don't I'll make it seem you. like she was but averaging five questions. points and this was like a handout. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a, handout. a handout. Look at her numbers. Look at her numbers Janet. comparable to the other guards that were on the team. Caitlin Clark, what she's doing doesn't minimize what they've done, but we should have been giving her the credit. We saw the ratings. We saw the merchandise sales. We saw the attendance, but y'all want to make it make it about something else. Oh, what about the women that laid the foundation? What about this? What about it? That ain't got nothing to do with Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is box office. She's doing this. And instead of giving her credit, y'all tried to make it about, oh, y'all poo-pooing the old guard. Y'all never talked about the old guard like this. Nah, I ain't gonna let it slide. With this move, Caitlin isn't just prioritizing her financial future. She's making a statement about her worth in a league that, unfortunately, hasn't kept pace with her contributions. As fans, we should celebrate her decision and recognize it as a courageous step, not only for her own growth, but also as a potential catalyst for change within women's basketball. Will this shift spark a broader conversation about pay equity and recognition for all players in the WNBA? Only time will tell, but one thing is for sure, Caitlin Clark's impact on the game is undeniable, and her journey will continue to inspire many. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content that dives deep into the world of sports. Share your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about Caitlin's decision? And how do you see the future of the WNBA evolving? Until next time, stay tuned for more exciting updates. It's more Steph Curry, man. It's a woman, Steph Curry. She's had the ball in her hand. Everybody was playing off of her. She just commanded the whole game. I was like, who the hell is this? <laughs> she is nice. It was like, oh, she's the best player in the country.